welcome back to part two. In today's video we'll be looking at the modification to the barrel, making the piston rings and also the cylinder studs. So currently what I'm doing is I'm preheating the cylinder barrel in order to braze up the holes on top. I need to braze up the holes because there's a different bolting pattern for this cylinder head. So the, obviously the PCD is slightly larger. So to tackle this I um, brought it up to temperature first in the oven, got it close you know, over 200 degrees, uh, brazed up those holes and once the brazing was done I put it back in the oven to normalise and let it cool down naturally over a, a period of time. Was then over to the milling machine and coming with a high speed steel cutter dropped down and knocked the tops off those uh, bronze welds. From here I bolted the barrel on top of the tool and cutter grinder and just gently took a lick off the top and got that surface uh, parallel to the bottom. Now it didn't take much off of this at all, so probably only you know, 25 micron, something like that, it was very, very little. Uh, over to the milling machine, I clocked up the ball there to find the X and Y zero. Now that allowed me once the zero was attained, I could come across now and just plunge mill uh, to that correct uh, pitch circle diameter. Once the holes were plunge milled, I then dropped in with the helicoil tap and uh, this is just cast so it tapped very very easily and put it in my vise and just ran the tap through there. Uh, these helicoil taps they give you is they're not really a tapered tap they're like an intermediate tap so they're a little bit hard to start but once they started they're, they're off and raising no worries at all. The helicoils were then installed and the uh, depth stop once again was set correctly and these are M8 helicoils going in here Once installed correctly, I dropped in with a tool and snapped off the tails. Made myself a gasket was on and now it was time to actually make the rings. So I, to make the rings I just used a bit of cast that I had and it was nearly on size for the diameter. I didn't have much to play with at all. So I had to come in there and face this cast. Once it was faced, I could just lightly parallel turn that and just take a, a very small light skim off that. Now I could centre drill it and what I have to do here is bore out, so drill out and bore out the centre piece to match the, uh, the inside diameter of the ring. And you can see here I'm just following up with different size drill bits, so just chasing it up. Uh, you know, enlarging the hole one step at a time. And now coming with my boring bar to bore that I internal diameter. Okay, I'm going to pop in now with the boring bar. Now I was getting a little bit of squeal out of that. You probably saw me touch it just to see if I could take that uh, resonance out of it. Um, it. It eventually went away. I just took a, a bigger cut. I took about three cuts on this to get it to size and then came in with my high speed steel parting tool and just parted off that ring to the correct uh, width of course. And there wasn't much room for error here when you make rings. I, I'm trying to make it to size off the tool ready to go because I can't do any more machining later on. And here are my two rings, they're just two compression rings coming off. And using a Dremel, this is how I obtained the end gap, by just making a, a, a very small slit and then expanding the ring over a piece of brass that I'd machined down, or that I used to use, use to hold my, one of my GoPro cameras. And that put a little bit of tension on the rings and heat treat them, heating them up red hot, quenching them in oil 
and then fitting them onto the piston. And you can see there that went on a little bit tight, but I got it on. Once the barrel slid on, I could tighten those bolts up. And you can tell I'm an old spinner monkey from way back. You can see me swinging off those bolts. All right, so barrel bolts in. I can now um, make the the rods. So the, these rods will screw in, and they need to be an 8mm bottom. They're machined out of 6mm and double threaded. So it's got to be 8mm on one end and 6mm on the other end. Uh, metric, of course. You can see here that I just chased these up, so I, what I did, I split the rod into three sections, and, and this was to eliminate flex when I was machining. Um, as you know, when you start to machine small diameters over, you know, any sort of length, they obviously want to distort or warp, you know, you end up with conical shapes. And so you can see here, once I got it down to size, so I was, I was hitting for 6mm, but it wasn't critical, it was you know, 6.05, it's fine, it's not going to worry me. These are purely to hold the cylinder head on. So now I'm going to turn that M8 thread on the, on the bigger end. And I'm just hitting this with a die, button die. Once the thread was done, I could spin it around and do the opposite side. For a bit of lubricant here, I'm using that hang surface drill and tap fluid. I find it works rather well. It's very thick and it sticks well to the job, doesn't flick off easily. Now I'm just dropping on the belt linisher and just cleaning up those threads, putting a slight chamfer on them and then installing them onto the motor. What I need to do now is make a blanking plug that will go in that oil return line in the barrel uh, as this won't be needed now because I need to block it off for compression reasons. And I'm just applying some red Loctite to that bung that I made and I'm just going to insert that into the hole. And, and then drive it home. Now I accidentally hit it uh, a whisker below centre so I topped it off with JB Weld and then uh, scraped and filed it down to the right height later on and that what gave me a good seal with the cylinder head gasket. Alright part three will all drop soon and we'll be looking at the cylinder head, flywheel and cam gear and I trust you enjoy that video and how about giving me a thumbs up. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.